Good morning. Contour integration. The integral is from 0 to infinity. x to the power a minus 1 over 1 plus x dx equal to pi over sine ax. Where a is lying between 0 and 1. Which means a is not an integer, right? So if I need to check the power a minus 1, let me subtract 1 from this. So we get 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And then a minus 1. And then 1 minus 1 is 0. So again we notice that a minus 1 is also not an integer. Right? So such kind of integration is having multi-valued function. Which means integration of multi-valued function. So let's start with the proof. Prove that 0 to infinity integration x to the power a minus 1 over 1 plus x dx equal to pi over sine a pi, where a is lying between 0 and 1. So let me put x equal to a to the power t. And then your dx will become e to the power t dt. So this integral is equal to then, okay, let's uh, find out the limits first. When x is equal to 0, what is the limit for t? t is negative infinity. Because x is e to the power t. So x is equal to 0, which means when e to the power t is 0, if t takes the value as negative infinity, then only e to the power t is 0. So the lower limit is uh, negative infinity. And when x is equal to infinity, which means e to the power t is equal to infinity, so the uh, value of t should be infinity because e to the power infinity is infinity. So the limits are now from minus infinity to plus infinity. And here x is e to the power t. So this is e to the power t and a minus 1 the power over 1 plus x which means 1 plus e to the power t and dx is e to the power t dt. So this is equal to minus infinity to infinity. The power becomes e to the power a t and then I can write it as e to the power negative t e to the power t over 1 plus e to the power t dt. So this will go. So this remains minus infinity to infinity e to the power a t over 1 plus e to the power t dt. Now I'm getting e to the power t in the denominator. That means we need to integrate along the lines x equal to negative r, x equal to positive r and y is equal to 2 pi. So here also we do not have to integrate along the semicircles. This is the special case of the integration of multi-valued functions. So here if you look, we will integrate along the real axis from negative r to r and then along the line x equal to r and then along the line y is equal to 2 pi. This I have mentioned here, the distance. And then along x equal to negative r. So we will integrate what is our function fz. Just write your function in terms of z. So this is integration minus infinity to infinity. So this is e to the power az over 1 plus e to the power z dz. Along the c where c is the contour from negative r to positive r followed by the lines x equal to r x equal to negative r and y is equal to 2 pi. Right? Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about the poles. 
Now, if I uh, take the denominator equal to 0, I get e the power z equal to negative 1, which means this is also equal to e the power pi iota. So, which means z equal to pi iota is our pole, which is a simple one. And pi iota lies inside this contour because this uh, the contour is having the distance 2 pi. So it lies in the mid, just between this is pi iota at this point. Right, so pi iota lies in this contour. So poles of the fz, simple pole at z is equal to pi iota that lies inside C. Right? Okay. Now let's calculate the residue of fz at pi iota. What is the formula? Just writing the numerator as it is. What is the numerator? e the power az. And derivating the denominator with respect to z, which is 1 plus e the power z at z equal to pi iota. So this is equal to e the power, I am putting the value of z here. This is a pi iota over, this is, if I take the derivative, this becomes e the power z. And putting the value of z, I get e the power pi iota. And I know that e the power pi iota is negative 1. How? Because I know that by Euler's formula, e the power pi iota is cos of pi plus iota sine of pi, cos of pi is negative 1, and sine of pi is 0, so e the power pi iota is negative 1. So I get the residue as negative e the power a pi iota. So by the Cauchy's residue theorem, this integration along the contour c fz dz is equal to 2 pi iota times the calculated residue. And that is negative e the power a pi iota, which is equal to negative 2 pi iota e raised to the power a pi iota. Is it fine? Alright. So now splitting the contour in the parts from minus r to r, then from r to, what is this point? This point is, yes, this is 2 pi. And then from negative, uh, from positive r to negative r, and then from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, let me start from here. Negative r to positive r, and then from this point is at x axis, this point is your 0 from 0 to 2 pi. Because this distance is 2 pi, if I integrate this along the y-axis, then you have to take the limits from 0 to 2 pi. I will explain you. First, I need to integrate along the x-axis. So the values of the x are negative r to positive r. This is fine. Okay. Then I need to integrate along x equal to, neg x equal to positive r, this line. And when I integrate along this line, which means I am integrating... With respect to y, because x is constant, that is x equal to r. This is constant. So, I am integrating with respect to y then. So, the limits will be from, limits will take uh, the values of y from 0 to 2 pi. Right? And then, I will integrate along this line. Right here, y is constant as 2 pi. So, I have to integrate with respect to x-axis, right? And x-axis is taking value from r to negative r. And then I will integrate along this line, which takes the value of x as constant, that is negative r, and y is varying. So, I have to integrate along uh, with respect to y, right? From 2 pi to 0. The limits will be from 2 pi to 0. Okay. Uh, let me write this. 
first I need to integrate along the x-axis. Along the real axis which is having only x-axis. So I have to integrate this with respect to x. Then I have to integrate with respect to because now add this. I have to integrate along this line. So I have to integrate with respect to y because y is varying. So here with respect to y. Then again with respect to x and then the last one is again with respect to y. Now uh, okay let me draw the rectangle here so that it will be easier for you. Please look carefully. This is your r. This is your negative r. This is x equal to r. And this is y is equal to 2 pi. And this is x equal to negative r. This distance is 2 pi, right? And here I am having, which is not required right now. Okay. First, I need to integrate along this, which means I have to integrate with respect to x. So, limits are for the x. From minus r to r, x is taking the limits from minus r to r. And I have to write the function in terms of x over here, right? So, this is e raised to the power ax over 1 plus e the power x. This is fine. Alright. Now I have to integrate along this line. And here y is varying. Right. So integrating with respect to y. So I have to take the limits for y. And at this point y is 0. And at this point y is. Because this is 2 pi. At this point, y is taking the value 2 pi, the maximum. Alright, okay. So, e raised to the power a. Now, here, z is taking, z is actually what? z is x plus iota y. Here, I am having y0. Right here, because I am having only the x axis, right? The values are only for the x, there is no y. When we integrate along minus r to r. Right now, if we integrate along this line, I'm having the values of x and y both. So, for the complex variable, x is, x is here, r, and y is varying. So, this is r plus iota y. So, this z becomes r plus iota y. Is this thing is clear? 1 plus e the power z means e the power this z r plus iota y. Alright. Okay. Now to integrate along this line. Which means y is constant and x is varying. x is varying. So limits are from positive r to negative r. And what is the z now? z is equal to x plus iota y. Okay. Because x is varying, x is variable here. And y is constant, which is 2 pi. So z becomes x plus 2 pi iota. So this is e raised to the power a. z is x plus 2 pi iota over 1 plus e the power z, e the power x plus 2 pi iota. I hope it is clear now. Okay, now if we integrate along this line, which means now y is varying and x is constant, which is negative r. So I have to write the limits for y, which is from this point y is 2 pi. And reaching here, This at this point y is 0. And because here 
y is constant sorry here x is constant so z is equal to x plus iota y here x is negative r plus iota y is varying so i have to write write y as it is and also we are integrating with respect to y of course y is variable for this integration okay so e raised to the power a z z is negative r plus iota y over 1 plus e the power z so e the power a negative r plus iota y. sorry not a sorry sorry e the power z z is negative r plus iota y all right this complete integration is equal to one thing more okay i have to write iota dy because this is your imaginary axis the variable is complex variable this is your imaginary axis and this x is your real axis okay so i have to also write iota dy okay so iota dy thank you okay so this is equal to negative 2 pi iota into e the power a pi iota fine let me mark this as 1 okay now for these two integrals this one and this one the value comes out to be zero always right integral having r r r and negative r let's check that now if z is equal to r plus iota y then what happens please first note that if I take the mod of e the power iota y, this is always equal to 1. You can use the Euler's formula. That is e the power iota y is what? Cos y plus iota sin y. Right. If you take the mod, if you solve this mod, this is actually cos square y plus sin square y under the root, which is 1. So... Take this as your note that mod of e the power iota y is 1. Okay, if z is r plus iota y, if I take the mod of fz, then what happens? Let me take the mod of fz. The function is this right over here. So this is a e raised to the power, sorry, e raised to the power a r plus iota y over 1 plus e raised to the power r plus iota y. Very fine. This mod is less than equal to, can I write e the power a r because e the power iota y is 1 over e the power r. Again, e the power iota y is 1. If you write this as e the power r into e the power iota y, if you take the mod, solve the mod, so this is less than equal to this. This is a property. And this is negative 1. As mod of 1 over x plus y is less than equal to 1 over x minus y. So this is equal to, just I have used the property. Thank you. This is equal to e the power. Okay, let me take e the power r common. So I get e the power a minus 1 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I'm having 1 minus uh, 1 over e the power r is e the power negative r. Now this will tend to 0 because r is very, very, very large, tending to infinity. So this will tend to infinity as r is tending to infinity. Because a minus 1 is lying between what? a minus 1 is lying between. We have checked in the start of the integration. is It is lying between minus 1 to 0. Please note here. This 
a minus 1 is lying between minus 1 and 0 which means this is negative right this is negative which means e raised to the power negative infinity so that is 1 uh, that is 0 So the integration along x equal to r vanishes as r tends to infinity. Here a minus 1 is negative. Right? Okay. Okay. Let's move on to the next thing. If z is negative r plus eta y, then what happens to the mod of fz? Let's check. This is e raised to the power a negative r plus iota y over 1 plus e raised to the power negative r plus iota y again i'm using the property this is less than equal to e raised to the power negative a r this mod is 1 e raised to the power iota y mod is 1 over 1 minus e raised to the power negative r this tends to 0 as r tends to infinity because here a is from 0 to 1 a is positive okay so but having because a is positive still the power is negative so the integral along x equal to negative r also vanishes as r is tending to infinity right 1 over inf 1 over e the power infinity is zero okay so let's let r tends to infinity in one and i will use this so letting r tends to infinity in one what i get the integration from negative infinity to positive infinity second integral vanishes and the third one is from positive infinity to negative infinity and the fourth integral vanishes okay so This is just writing. First is from minus infinity to positive infinity. And this is e the power ax over 1 plus e the power x. dx. Second vanishes. Third one is from infinity to minus infinity e the power a x and e the power 2 pi a iota right e the power 2 a pi iota over 1 plus again i'm writing it as e the power x into e the power 2 pi iota dx and fourth integral vanishes please note here i have written e the power x into e the power 2 pi iota fourth one is vanishing zero this this is equal to minus 2 pi iota e the power a pi iota so this is equal to minus 2 pi iota e the power a pi iota is it fine okay In the next step, I am taking, a, first of all, I am merging these two and taking common, this will become 1 minus e the power 2 pi a iota. See, this is same and this is same. Numerator, what is e the power 2 pi iota? This is? 1 so this is same right so taking this common and what is e the power 2 a pi iota i'm taking this outside and here i'm having 1 so this is 1 minus this wait let me put this as this is minus infinity to infinity and positive infinity. But, but before that, please note here. 
you only take common when you are having the same limits first. Please notice this. So if I if I change the limits, I have to change the sign. So to change the limit, from minus infinity to infinity, let me change the sign also then first. Now I can take this common. So I am taking common 1 minus e the power 2 pi a iota and writing this as minus infinity to infinity e the power a x over 1 plus e the power x dx that is equal to negative 2 pi iota e the power pi a iota is it fine before you take this common you have to just see that these limits should be equal right the lower limits and upper limits should be equal first that is why i have changed the limits and changed the sign also all right okay so this implies let's uh, let take this to the other side so this is minus infinity to infinity e the power ax over 1 plus e the power x dx that is equal to 2 pi iota e the power pi a iota over. If I take negative outside, so this negative will be cancelled out. So I am writing this as e the power 2 pi a iota minus 1. Just taking the negative sign outside and cancelling the negative from the numerator and the denominator. Alright, so this is equal to 2 pi iota. Okay. Now, if you look here, e the power pi a iota, let me take this to the denominator. So, this will be e the power negative pi a iota. So, this will become first term will become e the power pi a iota minus e the power negative pi a iota. Very fine. And I know that this is the formula. We all know that. So this is twice iota sine of, sorry, sine pi a. This is the formula. So this is equal to 2 iota, 2 iota cancelled out. So I got pi over sine of pi a. Yes, so finally I got, this implies, just putting back the limits, so this is 0 to infinity and putting e the power, uh, e the power x, that is e the power ax back to our original numerator which is x a raised to the power, x the power a minus 1 over 1 plus x dx, our original limits, right? Because from here only we have start, we have put x is equal to e the power t and then we have started our proof so i reached here and then taking this integral back into its form so this is integration will be from 0 to infinity x to the power a minus 1 over 1 plus x dx so this is equal to finally pi over sine of pi a absolutely perfect all right Thank you friends for watching this video. Do like and subscribe for the latest videos. God bless you all. Thank you.